Tuesday, December 12th, 2017, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I want to look at the market uh, this morning. Well, it's 12.30, so it's past midday. It's a little later than usual for the uh, market update. So let's start uh, with gold. We're at 12.42.20, up 50 cents. The range has been 12.41 to 12.46. So as usual, uh, this morning earlier on, gold was near the highs around 12.46 as London came in and it drifts lower as the day goes by just before uh, the COMEX official uh, opening at uh, 1.20 London time or 8.20 New York time. And that's been happening for years and years, for as long as I've been following gold. Uh, there's been studies about if you eliminated the the U.S. futures, the COMEX uh, on gold trading, that uh, gold would be a lot higher if we only traded up to uh, the New York Open. And if you look at gold after like uh, 820 New York and only look at that price then, gold would be like at $300 or something. It's amazing how um, the when the U.S. session starts, how much gold is uh, driven lower. Uh, the majority of the time so that's the uh, manipulation of course spot silver 1576 up five uh, a range has been 1568 to 1583 so silver has drifted lower as well the dow is surprisingly higher and <laughs> i'm joking up 50 points at 24432 uh, s p 500 up four at 2663 uh, we have been a little higher, but not that much. Uh, the NASDAQ uh, 100 future is up four. And the main thing, of course, is the F FOMC meeting. That's It's a two-day meeting. It starts today, and tomorrow they have the uh, press conference and the announcement. They are expected to raise rates by 25 basis points. And uh, Yellen will also have uh, present... The, the Fed uh, forecasts uh, for the economy, <laughs> whatever that's worth. Uh, Currency-wise, uh, sterling a little stronger, up 21 pips at 133.60. Uh, Euro basically unchanged, 117.70. Uh, dollar down 10 pips against the yen at 113.45. So it's been very quiet uh, in the major, in the main markets uh, this morning. Not much to report. Uh, crude oil has actually gone back up uh, quite well. It's up 41 cents. The WTI, it's at 58.40, up 0.7%. Uh, and I read as well that the uh, the Brent crude, the other contract, that's gone above $65. So that's uh, quite a big move there for, uh, for crude. Uh, cryptocurrencies, um, yeah, Bitcoin is... Uh, 16,700 uh, yesterday I think we got got up back up to near 18,000 uh, Litecoin is doing very well uh, I remember a few weeks ago uh, Litecoin was trading around 65 bucks I think uh, now it's almost you know just got up to 303 and it's now 294 Ethereum uh, the breakout at that 400 level I spoke about how uh, we could have a target of 550, and lo and behold, the high to the, today has been 550 in Ethereum. There's very interesting things uh, going on. It's not just Bitcoin. For example, Steam Dollar, uh, which I have quite a few, quite a bit, because I uh, publish a lot, of, all my videos on Steam. It that's gone from like uh, there's a few knots before, but if you let's have a look here in terms of. Uh, Bitcoin, what it's done, um, Steam Dollar. But uh, the funny thing about Steam Dollar is that it was supposed to be pegged to the dollar, but it's uh, actually done really well. So in the last month, for example, one Steam Dollar in, in terms of Bitcoin has gone from a low of 0 0.00011 to now we are at 0 0.007. So it's gone up uh, quite a bit, uh, you know, sixfold uh, 
bit uh, against Bitcoin. So there's a lot of opportunity everywhere. I've made a video months ago, maybe you know six months or even a year, that I, I said uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, the alt tokens. It's like the dot com uh, bubble, in my opinion. You're gonna have um, a lot of uh, tokens uh, like the dot coms that uh, will do really well uh, up to you know when the market turns. I don't know when that's gonna happen, and when it turns, a lot of these uh, tokens uh, are gonna go you know out of business or not exist anymore. And I think, of course, the major ones uh, or you know, the major coins will be Bitcoin. That will be around a bit like the Amazon. And we don't even know if Bitcoin, <laughs> you know, some another uh, cryptocurrency or coin will come out and like beat uh, Bitcoin. Uh, you know, we all remember like Ask Jeeves and, and that was before Google and that's disappeared. So it's very interesting. One thing I would advise people... Um, well, that's the way I look at things. I'm not an adv advisor, of course. This is just uh, my way of looking at things. Uh, if you re read through history, the people that get hurt when you have manias, and I I'm sorry, we, I have to admit it's a mania right now, and I am involved you know, uh, with the cryptocurrencies, but you have to be careful. I I've read articles that people are starting to take uh, second mortgages to, to buy Bitcoin, I think that's silly. Uh, those are the people that get hurt. Only uh, speculate what you can lose. Uh, if you're not a trader uh, by profession, don't try to trade. Just try to invest. Just get some coins or out tokens or whatever and leave it there and uh, see what it does. Um, trading is a 24-hour, uh, you know, 24-7 uh, job especially in the cryptocurrencies they never you know the markets never shut so that's what i wanted to talk about in terms of cryptocurrencies uh, uh as far as the precious metals concerned we've seen the last couple of years when the fed hiked rates in december that precious metals tended to bottom those uh right after right at the day when they uh, hiked or a day or two after, like in December 2015, gold bottomed at 1,045, and that's when the Fed uh, hiked for the first time, and that was the bottom. I think uh, the day after it bottomed at that level. So it will be interesting to see if we are near a uh, short-term bottom in gold. I know it's been frustrating, but um, I'm not uh, giving up, uh, you know, uh, Intellectually, I have to believe that gold is, uh, you know, has the track record, track record, and I think people will be rewarded for patience. Some people aren't patient; that's their problem. Um, what else? Uh, I want to talk about about a book. Recommend a book, uh, really interesting book about central banks. Uh, I really uh, like reading about central banks, not because I like them. Because, in my opinion, they're like an instrument of enslavement, debt enslavement. And uh, very few people understand it. But uh, with the internet, I mean, the, the stuff I've been talking on, on my channel, I used to talk to colleagues at work, you know, uh, 15, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, but uh, on the internet, there is nothing about it. But people now with cryptocurrencies, it's become a lot more... Uh, divulged the, this information. And I think it's really important for everyone to be educated uh, on what central banks really are. So this is the book here, A History of Central Banking and the Enslavement of Mankind. It's by uh, Stephen Mitford Goodson. And the interesting, interesting thing about the cover is that in the middle here, we've got the coat of arms of the Rothschild family, he put that in the middle there, and it says Concordia Integritas Industria. So uh, Concordia means, I guess, harmony, uh, integrity, and industry. Um, so that's their uh, coat of arms. I mean, when you walk down uh, their office in uh, 
New Court in London, City of London. They have a they have that uh, coat of arms hanging from the uh, from the building. Uh, brand new building. I think they built it in the last five, six years. It used to be an old uh, 1960s building. And uh, interesting, we've got Julius Caesar. We've got Charles I, uh, Napoleon, Abraham Lincoln, Tsar, Nick, uh, Tsar Alexander II of Russia, Hitler, uh, JFK, and Gaddafi. Um, I'd like to talk about about a little bit about why he he's got uh, Lincoln and uh, Tsar Alexander II. Well, I suspect well it, it's because Lincoln printed the greenbacks uh, to finance the Civil War. They were uh, issued by the Treasury, interest free uh, Treasury notes, greenback. The bankers didn't like it. They um, you know, he was assassinated. Um, so what's the connection with Alexander, uh, Alexander II? Well, very few people know that the, uh, the Russian Imperial Navy helped uh, the Union um, because the war wasn't going too well. So uh, you had, uh, I think... Yeah, uh, Alexander II, the Tsar, he sent uh, Russian uh, naval ships to uh, San Francisco, outside San Francisco Bay, and I also think New York. And that helped, um, you know, the Union greatly because France and England basically wanted the U.S. Uh, the U.S. to split uh, and into two small countries. They didn't want a powerful uh, Union. Uh, which is what they got. So I suspect, and he was assassinated, this guy, uh, Alexander II, I think in 1888. I think and he was czar from 55 to 88. And he was the guy who also freed the, uh, emancipated the serfs in Russia. Um, so I'll read a little bit about the book uh, from the back. I read it quite a while ago, so... Um, I'm going to read it again, but I, rec I recommend it. Uh, you can probably found it, find it online. Uh, it says, A History of Central Banking and the Enslavement of Mankind is Stephen Mitford Goodson's companion volume to, to Inside the South African Reserve Bank, Its Origins and Secrets Exposed. While the latter volume describes the mechanics of the fraudulent usury banking system with a focus on Goodson's experiences as director of the South Africa Reserve Bank. So Stephen Mitford Goodson worked as a director of the South African Reserve Bank, which is the equivalent of the Federal Reserve for the uh, South African, uh, for South Africa. With a focus on Goodson's experience as director, okay, this volume expands the focus to encompass the role of banking and money in history from ancient times to the present. And he go, it goes on to say, the role of money lenders in history was once aptly termed by many acute observers as the hidden, hidden hand. It is the power to create, lend, and accumulate interest on credit and then reland that interest for further interest in perpetuity that creates pervasive worldwide debt from the individual to the family to the entire state. The ability to operate a fraudulent credit and loan system has long been known, been known, known. and through all the sick slickness of a snake oil salesman, the moneylenders, the same types Jesus whipped from the temple, have persuaded governments that banking is best left to private interests. Uh, so, very interesting. So, um, let's wait and see what happens to the uh, FOMC tomorrow. See how precious metals perform. Uh, very disappointing, of course, uh, precious metals. Uh, so far this year, even though gold is up on the year, I think silver in dollar terms is slightly down. Um, especially, you know, seeing what's going on in cryptocurrencies and even in the stock market. So 
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share it, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't yet, uh, you can follow me also on steamit.com and on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for the support and uh, they've given uh, to the channel. Uh, I think I, yeah, I broke over 10,000 subscribers uh, about 10 days ago or a week ago. Um, I guess it's not going up as fast as Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, maybe um, I'll catch up or the spread will come in. I'll talk to you later. Bye.